place. What do you say to them? Right? Give them your half glass half full glass. Well, I, I'd say uh, you know look at the look at the broad picture. Look at uh, Hawkeye fans uh, have proven they will come and, and fill Carver Hawkeye Arena. Uh, they've done it uh, many many times in the past. Perennially, we've been in the top 25 in the country. Uh, during during both of those coaches' tenures that you mentioned, uh, they had wonderful years and wonderful success at times. They didn't do it year in and year out, but over time they had some some terrific seasons and some terrific success. Uh, I think during Coach Davis's, the two coaches you're mentioning, mentioning are Davis and, and Alford, uh, and I think during both of their tenures, uh, you know, that arena was was full. There were championships won. There were exciting moments uh, felt by Hawkeye fans. So that's what I would that's what I would say is uh, you know even under those two coaches, uh, they had tremendous runs at times. What if a coach says, um, a coach you're talking to is concerned about about you that you might have a quick trigger? That's a, that's a fair question based on this single experience. Uh, many of the coaches who know me, the athletic directors who know me, I'm, I'm a relatively conservative by nature. Uh, this was a, a painstaking decision for me. I, I believed when we hired Todd that uh, I hoped that he would retire here. Uh, that was certainly the plan going in. Uh, I, I have acted that way with, uh, with other coaches in our program. I'm not somebody who desires turnover. I'm not somebody who looks forward uh, somehow takes pride or pleasure in uh, the next hire. That's not how I'm made up. I would love to never have to hire another coach again because that would mean that we're incredibly successful uh, and, and I can just continue to try to provide them resources to be successful. So um, this is one incident. Uh, I, I've explained to you generally, not in detail, uh, how I came to it, but, but please uh, understand uh, this is not something that, that I enjoyed doing and it was not something I anticipated doing and it's not something uh, that I hope I ever have to do it again. And, and Iowa, so that's, that's my approach, but also Iowa has a tradition and a history of, uh, of long tenure coaches. Well, what would you say to those who perceive this as you taking maybe the side of a couple of disgruntled players over your coach? I know some people I've talked to have thought that that's been Once again, there's rumors uh, uh, you know, that abound. Uh, you know, the, the world today is filled with, uh, the internet has, has provided a vehicle with Rumors. Uh, there was one person that made this decision, and that was me. And uh, I, I made the decision based on all the factors I, I uh, shared with you. Uh, I did the best I could to get to the bottom of facts in terms of, uh, you know, what was happening within the program, and I made a decision. But no booster, no donor, no student athlete, uh, you know, forced me, forced my hand, forced this decision. It's a decision that I made. I made the recommendation to President Mason, and uh, and we ended it today. Why did you when make when today as opposed to say after the game against Michigan on Thursday or like sometime over the weekend. You know, uh, maybe it goes back to my conservative nature. I I wanted uh, very much to continue uh, with Todd with his uh, with his style with his past performance, uh, and so I wanted to make sure that I had crossed every T and dotted every I. Uh, I didn't want to make a rash decision, and so. Uh, at the end of the game, my decision had not been finalized, so I may have uh, finalized it this morning. But the reason I didn't make it after the game, Michigan, uh, after the Michigan game, is because it hadn't been finalized. It was reported last week that he was going to resign for health reasons. Was that ever part of it? I, you know, I had heard rumors during the game, something that in fact that's, uh, that's absolutely false. Have you spoken to the players, and do you plan on speaking to them? And the, the four young men signed, who I think have a lot of questions. You bet. The, uh, it's spring break, so addressing first the question about the current student athletes, we've contacted all of them. Uh, you know, today is obviously at a fast pace, so uh, we've reached out to all of them so they knew ahead of time what had happened. Uh, I've not directly spoken to them. I'll be doing that as part of my process over the next two days. Uh, it, it's not, unfortunately, with spring break, I can't get the team together like I normally would, uh, but I'll do that as soon as it's possible, as soon as they return. Gary, as a follow-up to Tom's question, have you, did you talk to any of the uh, assistants on Todd's staff and uh, who's sort of driving the ship right now? Uh, well, consistent with what I've done in the past when coaching changes have occurred during my career and, and consistent with what I did uh, when Steve left and when we were out uh, hiring his coach, uh, I'll sit down with, uh, with somebody and they'll sort of serve as my day-to-day, -day, uh, but I'll be directly involved with conversations with recruits with current student athletes, that's what I did last time. That's what I anticipate doing again this time. 
Do you have uh, anybody an idea for any idea? Of which you know, I've met with be? two out of three assistants today. Again, uh, timing just hasn't allowed to to have all my meetings, uh, but I haven't made any final decisions. 